morning. I'm delighted to be here to, uh, this morning to share um, with you some of my experiences in relation to um, the issue of gender-based violence. Um, I'm speaking from a research perspective, as Susan has explained. Uh, I've been working um, on a program of research since around 2004 on homelessness, and uh, the theme or the issue of gender-based violence has emerged very, very strongly from this research. Um, I have done, conducted um, a number of studies of homeless young people, but today I want to speak um, more specifically about a very recent study of homeless women that I conducted. Um, this study, um, as Susan said, was just um, launched in uh, February, um, just passed, and uh, it included um, 60 homeless women aged between 18 and uh, 62 years. Um, I just want to say something very briefly about the approach that we took to conducting this research because I think that this, this is quite important um, because we didn't simply end up with a list of statistics. Um, the approach to the research was to speak directly um, to women adopting what we call a biographical approach. So we um, started our interviews by asking women um, to tell us their life stories. So, very, so this allowed us to really contextualize the experience of homelessness so that we get a much broader picture of, of the women's lives. And probably um, uh, significant is that emerging from this type of approach, homelessness emerged as just one manifestation of these women's um, marginality. As I said, uh, 60 women participated in, in the research, and 17 of these women were migrant women. And the, I've, I've noticed that it's very strongly that other speakers have mentioned um, the issue and, and the challenges uh, faced by migrant women who are living in contexts of domestic violence. And I will return to that in a few moments. Just in terms of, I suppose, the prevalence of domestic uh, and other forms of gender-based violence, well, um, first of all, uh, over 90% of these women had experienced some form of, of violence or abuse across during their lifetime. Um, over 70%, in fact, nearly three quarters, had experienced some form of violence or abuse as children. And very often, this was in the form of child sexual abuse. And what we very clearly saw here was that these um, children, as they, when they reach their teenage years, they in fact start, started to flee these contexts of domestic violence. And this would actually have been constituted their first experience of homelessness. Very often this was a form of hidden homelessness. They stayed with friends, uh, they stayed in unsafe places <coughs> on the street and so on. So they were beginning this pattern of, begin of, of um, we're beginning to see very early on the impact of um, violence on their lives. Now, violence didn't stop here for a very large uh, number of the women. In fact, two thirds, 40 of the 60 women, had experienced um, intimate partner violence. And 20% of these had ex experienced um, violence from more than one intimate partner. So that we're, what we're very much seeing is that gender-based violence really was a very prominent feature of these women's life experiences. And we're also seeing patterns of gender-based violence across the life course. Um, in, uh, as, as adults uh, living in contexts of domestic violence, of course, these women were found themselves in a situation which, were, in effect, they were choosing between domestic violence and homelessness. And the violence was most often hidden and remained undisclosed for very long periods. And this, this um, uh, I suppose, emerged as a very complex issue of non disclosure, of concealing, and their situation was indeed complex but really was end up underpinned very strongly by their poverty, and in particular their economic dependence on their male partners. And this form of dependence uh, very often linked to uh, manipulations and very strongly uh, linked to women's support and position in these relationships meant that these women remained uh, in violent relationships for uh, much longer than they might otherwise have. So that the really the themes of secrecy and control were very, very strong um, in these women's accounts. Um, in terms of, I, I suppose, um, looking at issues that, that may, um, may help, um, first of all, we need to recognize the extent um, of uh, <coughs> references we made previously to the broad problem of domestic violence and other forms of gender-based violence in Irish society. I guess I'm speaking here about a group of particularly marginalised women, 
um, women who, in, in certainly in my experience of, of working in the research context with women, these are not women that we see on the streets as homeless. And um, homelessness is a very hidden phenomenon. And indeed, in these women's lives, homelessness is just, as I said earlier, one manifestation of their extreme marginality in Irish, um, in Irish <coughs> society. And these women typically grew up in contexts of poverty and experienced a lot of childhood deprivation. <coughs> um, so I think there are a lot of there are a lot of challenges uh, if we want to um, if we want to reach um, very marginalised women and to provide the kinds of levels of supports that are required in order for them to respond to um, situations of domestic violence. On the more positive side, certainly women in the study who did access um, refuges, um, particularly those who accessed them sooner um, rather than later, certainly responded very well. And um, this was very clearly the case uh, with migrant women, although they did experience difficulty in having information and finding information or having access to information. Indeed, a number of the migrant women approached strangers on the streets who they believed to be of the same ethnicity in order to access um, these services. But important to say that women strongly pra praised um, uh, the domestic violence services they accessed and in particular a uh, sense of empowerment um, engendered through the work of the staff in these services and the, the positive impact of this um, on their lives. So I leave it at that and maybe uh, people have specific questions they'd like to pose at a later stage. Thank you.